Happy Monday, Hearts Full High. I'm Chandler. And I'm Sam. This is another episode of RRTV. In school news, if you want to send your friend something sweet for Halloween, you can purchase a Halloween candy bear for $1. Each candy gram will include a Halloween note and candy. The candy grams will be delivered on Friday, October 29th. You can purchase candy grams for many teachers around the campus. So check Schoology in the student information section under announcements for more information. We have prepared a little sneak peek for all of you who are curious about homecoming week. Golly, Sams, what are we going to do for homecoming? There are just so many ideas. I just don't know. I mean, you're right. What are we going to do? Boys, I've got an idea. We hope you guys are excited as we are for homecoming. History is back with Coker and Miles. This week they're talking about the Wild Wild West. Welcome back to History with Miles and Coker. This week we'll be talking about how Spanish vaqueros inspired the American cowboy. Vaqueros were around the hundreds of years before the American cowboys. They were Native Americans or indigenous people who lived in Mexico and were taught by Spaniards. They taught them how to round up cattle on horseback. They had similar roles to cowboys, but they invented most of the techniques that cowboys still use today. Vaqueros used lassos or lazos, which translates to rope in Spanish, to round up cattle and wild horses. They could then tame the horses to be ridden. They also wore chaps or chaparreras, which are now used by people who ride horses to protect themselves from abrasive plants like cacti from hurting their legs. Vaqueros and Latinos are often portrayed as evil figures in American movies and TV. This is most evident in Western films like The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, where a Latino man, Eli Wallach, portrays one of the two antagonists, which the movie describes as the ugly. The name cowboy also originates from vaqueros. The root vaca in Spanish means cow. The impact that vaqueros had on cattle ranching may not be well known, but most of the methods used by them are still used today. That's all for this week. Now back to the anchors. Hardy's back this week with another installment of sports. Hey Red Foxes, I'm Hardy. On Tuesday, the varsity cross country team travels to go against Darlington and the girls golf team plays in the region tournament in Myrtle Beach. Also on Tuesday, the varsity tennis team will face Wilson and Florence and also go to Darlington to go against them on Thursday. The volleyball team have multiple games this week. They play Wilson on Tuesday, Magby on Wednesday, and Darlington on Thursday. All of these games will be at home. On Thursday, the JV football team will face South Florence at home. And finally, on Friday, the varsity football team travels to face South Florence. That's all for sports. Back to Sam's and Chandler. Thanks, Hardy. There are tons of classes on campus that excel every single week. Jacob and Blake are here with a new segment called Class of the Week. This week for Class of the Week, Blake and I visited Province Stats taught by Mr. Pierce. We filmed the class going over bill work and talked to Mr. Pierce. Point, that's the highest point. Your median, just like we did before, that's where you work your way in, okay? When we work our way into it, we get the, it's right here, in between 83 and 85. What number comes in between 83 and 85? 84. Okay, there's only the one number that's gonna go in between there, that's our um, Nick Pierce, uh, math teacher here at Hartsville High School, room 310. Um, the class that we were in was probability and statistics. It's uh, usually a senior level class. There, occasionally there'll be a few juniors in there. Um, but a lot of it is just interpreting data, being able to manipulate it and be able to get it in the situations that you want. We can do different types of graphs and we do all types of things in there. Um, try to get everybody learning and uh, get into the next level. Thanks guys, we greatly appreciate all of our classes that go above and beyond. We also appreciate our athletes that do their best every day. Here are highlight of just one of the many athletes here at HHS. What made you want to play volleyball? Um, I started volleyball in seventh grade and I started playing because all my friends were. What's your pre-game routine? My pre-game -pre routine, I eat grouchos and I always fold down my socks. And I also, me and my teammates all have special handshakes with each other that we do before each game. How do you feel about your last performance? My last performance was probably not my best performance. There were a bunch of errors that I could have fixed, but it was an okay performance. Congratulations to the Athlete of the Week. There are tons of students on campus that have great expectations and excel in the classroom. Here are Daniel and Chandler with our Student of the Week. Today we are here with Jameer G and he 
is our student of the week this week, and today we'll be asking him a couple of questions. So, Jameer, what makes you a good candidate for the student of the week? Uh, coming to school every day, learning, and get my education. Why do you look forward to coming to school? Uh, get my education and ready to graduate. What are some of your favorite aspects of Hartsville High School? Um, the teachers, they help me get ready to learn and take me to the next step my education. All right, thank you, Jameer. We are here with Ms. Zimp, who nominated Jameer as Student of the Week. Ms. Zimp, why did you nominate Jameer for Student of the Week? I was thrilled to nominate Jameer for Student of the Week because he's a very hard-working young man. He works hard at school, he works um, just about full-time, part-time job, and he's always courteous and respectful to everyone around him. He's an excellent example of what students should be at Arts High School. Thank you, Ms. Zimp. We are here with one of Jameer's teachers, Ms. Ganey, and she's going to say a few good things about Jameer. Jameer is an awesome student. I love having him in class every day. He's quick to come ask me about work and get extra help if he needs it and to actually get a good explanation to help people at his table. He's never disruptive and he always pays attention. I like having him in class. He's an A-plus student. Thank you, Ms. Ganey. Now back to the anchors. Thanks, guys. Congratulations to the student of the week. Mac and John are here with another installment of Movie Reviews. Hi, I'm Mac. And I'm John. Today we are back with another spooky movie review. A great movie to watch for this fall season is Hush. Hush features Kate Siegel, a deaf writer, living in her home alone when she has to protect herself during a home invasion. The man is an antagonist in the movie. And when he realizes that she is deaf, she will be an easy new victim to kill. Although he doesn't immediately kill her, he toys with her causing the film to be even scarier. I think that Hush was a great horror movie and it was neat how the movie started with the kills very early. We rate the movie a 9 out of 10 due to the very scary atmosphere of a woman living alone in the woods while a man is plotting to kill her. That's all for the movie reviews today. Now back to the anchors. Well, I can't wait to see that movie. Well, that's all for today, Foxes. Stay classy, Archibald High.